dealer, the best watch to me is the one that I haven't found yet. I believe in uh, variety being the spice of life. I find myself buying on eBay on a regular basis. It's kind of like treasure hunting. I change my watch more than I change my underwear. <laughs> That's a joy of being a watch dealer. Every day is Christmas. You know, vintage watches are about stories, and this watch in particular has a really interesting story to me. It's a Rolex Submariner 6536, made in 1957. It was actually one of the first watches that I bought off of eBay. The guy that owned it came over to the United States on a boat, landed on the 4th of July in 1957, and went into a store and bought this Rolex to start his new life. And I just thought that part of the story was so charming. Boy, is this minty. The date code on the uh, bracelet is right. The hands are original, the bezel's original, like everything is as it should be on this. It is just in unparalleled condition. This is a Cartier Tank Louis, 18 karat gold. A Cartier started making these early 1900s, and they're still making a variation of it today. But it's just something that can be worn daily, luxurious piece. As a Cartier aficionado myself, I approve of this choice. You know, the Tank LC is one of the classic designs. It's one of the most iconic, in my opinion. It's an at-a-glance watch. They don't look like anything else, and they predate most everything else. If you're a watch collector, you should have at least one Omega Speedmaster moon watch. It's quite literally the first watch worn on the moon. Back in the 60s, NASA took all the major chronographs of the time and did a test. Then the Omega Speedmaster ended up winning. I mean, first watch on the moon is marketing gold, you know? You can brag about that until the end of time. This watch almost single-handedly has kept the mechanical wind chronograph alive. It's also an entry-level piece for so many. It's, it's kind of a jumping off point. I bought this watch six years ago on eBay, and it was the first Wellsboro that I bought. And then I looked into taking the intellectual property. And in a six-year-long odyssey, I have relaunched Wellsboro. The watch itself is, is lovely. You know, I sell everything, but just on a pure personal preference, I love a vintage mechanical chronograph. And you were telling me about it, so I'm excited to, uh, to see it. It seems a little bit larger than the standard uh, chronographs from the time, and a waterproof case for a chronograph of this time period. It's also uh, unique. So the grail watch that I chose is the Rolex Rainbow Daytona, the rose gold version, which personally, I happen to think is the best one. Uh, when they added the uh, sapphires on the dial, that kind of match the gradation on the bezel. It looks a lot better than the previous version, in my opinion. Men like it, women like it, everybody likes it, it makes kids smile. It's a big deal. Everything about that watch is a big deal. It is extremely limited, and it's probably triple retail, is that right? Four times retail? Some, Possibly, something yeah. like that. I mean, I think one of the most daunting things for customers is buying expensive things from people you don't know on the internet. And uh, obviously with the authenticity guarantee, it kind of uh, mitigates that risk there. As a seller who does 99% of my business on eBay, the authenticity guarantee has been super effective for me. Absolutely. <laughs> I like the trend-setting designs like that Bulgari, the super thin one. I mean, I'm excited to see something like that, stuff that I haven't seen before. I see integrated bracelet trend continuing. I see small watch trend continuing. And I see unavailability of the best stuff continuing. That's just not gonna change. I've had people ask me, so what are you gonna do when watches are gonna stop selling? If mechanical watches stop selling, I'm that's, that's the answer. <laughs> but it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry, bigger now than ever it was before. Yeah. Uh, it's not going anywhere.